take it. Two legends in basketball analysis with over 70 years combined experience. This is the Bob Ryan and Jeff Goodman podcast. NBA, some college. All right, welcome in to another episode of the Ryan and Goodman podcast. Uh, Gary cannot be with us today, but uh, we're going to fly the two of us. And we are sponsored, uh, presented by Prize Picks, the exclu- exclusive fantasy partner of CLNS Media Network. Uh, pick more, pick less with Prize Picks. All right, Rob, Robert, uh, we got a uh, we got something to talk about here. I'm I'm excited because we actually have like stuff every week now. We have oh, games yeah. and we have a game last night uh, in Boston that you were at in which yeah. can we can we start with the what was it like when Steve Kerr was introduced and when he came on the court and because of all this, I have my own thoughts on this Tatum Kerr rivalry, if you want to call it that. Well, I have to admit, I, I was neglectful in making sure that I was present when he would first take the floor when they came out for warm ups or whenever. You know, some coaches come in very late. I don't know. I blew that. So I wish I had. That was my bed. All right. I was chatting. I was doing anyway. But the official introduction by Eddie Palladino, the longtime PA announcer at the Boston Garden, uh, and he put a little flourish in it, you know, and uh, it was predictable booze naturally. And, and, you know, I, you knew that, and he knew it, and he was going to have, and he, I think he's a wonderful guy. And I, I, he, he took it, you know, naturally. He knew it was totally, how stupid would you have to be not to anticipate what was going to happen? No, so it, was, it, it happened. Okay, fine. You know, um, that team, you know, they're, they're surprising the world a little bit right now. And um, and the, the, the game was, and he played, now we, the Celtics, of course, are playing shorthanded. And they were playing a bit shorthanded because Podzemski, who's become a regular major contributor, did yeah. not play for them. But it's still not the same as not having Porzingis and Brown. Like, they haven't had Porzingis yet at all. All right. Celtics. Get off to a very quick start. Dennis, uh, uh, our boy uh, Derek White has 11 quick points. They're up 14 to three. But by the and this, then the Warriors got their mojo going. They're up by 11 at the half. Southers come back and to the point where they're up seven with the ball yeah. in, with six and change. And then from that point on, the Golden State dominates the game, takes the game away from them. Um, they, here's what struck at me, what, 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 what they did. Their transition finishes were fantastic. I no one mentioned it that I, you know, good. I but I took note of it when they attacked the hoop boy, they finished, and I mean, it was it, it was a, not just one person because Curry is totally underrated, you know, as a as a guy going to the hoop. I, as, I love it when he goes to the hoop, but but I'm talking, but but he usually would think about him going to the hoop in the half court, but I'm talking about transition finishes and um, you know, and J- Jackson Davis and Anderson. Uh, et cetera, company waters of uh, different guys made really good solid finishes. Then, of course, we have one of the most interesting, intriguing stories of the year going on for them. Buddy Heald yes. is, is, is making it clay who, yeah, right yeah. now they don't miss him because he's giving them exactly he can do the same thing Thompson would have given them, That's if right. maybe a little even more or less money. So, yeah, oh, a lot less money. Yep. Now, um, he, you know, he got up to you know, he, he's he his first couple threes, and anyway. It was, they're going to be, you know, we know they're well coached and they have a superstar still. And, and, uh, uh, they're going to be heard from. They're not going to win a championship. God knows. No, I, I still not gonna, say they're playing. I, I say they're playing way over their head right yeah, now. Yeah, probably they're, they're are. Down. I mean, right now, if the playoffs started tonight, you'd say, I don't, you know, you, you wouldn't be saying goody, goody, we're going to play the Warriors, but you, but you still think you could beat them. Yeah. But what Kerr's doing is attracting attention. He's spreading out the minutes in a way we haven't seen very often. In, in the last 30 or 40 years, um, the, 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 the two leading minutes guys are, or three of them are at 28 minutes, give or take, you know, with the decimal points are Curry predictably 28 yep. green, 28 yep. and, and, uh, uh, Podzimski 28, but they've got, uh, Wiggins 26 minutes a game. Hill 21, Moody 17, Jackson Davis, 18, Melton 17. He didn't play this. I don't think. Um, Anderson, 14, Looney, 16, Waters, 15, Peyton, the second, 13, 13 guys are getting minutes, at least, thir- at least 13 minutes a game. Yeah. Wow. Now is that going to be maintained? Is that going to be the formula for the rest of the year? No one thinks it will be, 
But, I mean, what what they do is they guard now because they've got some young guys who can. Yeah. Looney gets after it defensively. We know Draymond does. Um, Wiggins, when he wants to be, can be a really good defender. So, like, that's the big difference to me why they're winning games right now. Because I, I don't think, again, you know, I look at it and, you know, I watch, I like Trace Jackson Davis. He's a good, good player. I liked him in college. Yeah, he's a good player. I mean, again, Budzinski's a good player. I, I think they're ultimately, you know, if they're in that four or five game, then Steve Kerr has done a hell of a job in the West. Oh, yeah. That would, well, I, I was thinking more about just making it at all, you know. But, but. Yeah, I think they'll make it. But again, people get so caught up in a, a seven and one or whatever they are start. And it's eight games. I mean, it's eight games. Yeah. They can, oh, yeah. Now, again, that's a great win in Boston. That's a great no, it's win. It's a nice win for them. And, and uh, I mean, I'm sure they were really feeling very good about themselves. I'm sure their announcers were crowing nicely. It was, yeah. you know, they're going to beat the champs. And once again, the Celtics are not the whole team that they're going to be, but still in all, they, they've been winning despite it and, until last night, except for that overtime loss in Indiana. It was a nice night. It, was, it wasn't a great night of NBA basketball, but if I'm Golden State, Man, I'm feeling proud of my team. Yeah, you know I mean? definitely. I'm feeling proud of my team. And I'm they, happy that Steph is relevant right now. Like, yeah, I don't right. know how long it'll last, but you want, just like you want LeBron to be relevant at the end here, you want Steph to be relevant. Uh, can I tell you my thoughts on the Tatum Kerr thing? Yeah, sure. Kind of know both of them pretty well. Um, I, I'll say this from Tatum's end. The one thing with Jason Tatum, I don't think he gets into a lot of the drama. I, I just don't like, that's not him. He's not like this, you know, guy who, who's, who's like a reality TV guy, right? Like who, who talks to everybody who gossips, you know, I think obviously he heard everybody else talking about this, which made it a lot bigger, right? When, when everybody else picked up on it and they talk about how, you know, the, Oh, he got screwed by Steve Kerr, this, that, and the other, obviously, yeah, it's a hit to his ego. Anyway, it's a hit to his ego. And, you know, I think if Steve Kerr had just been fairly transparent going in and told them, hey, listen, here's the deal, man. We're probably going to go with the old guys because this is their last hurrah, right? And you're probably going to play. You might not play a game here or there, but um, this this one's going to be a little different than, than four years from now. Um, I think it would have been fine, but I don't think the communication maybe was as good. But again, I don't, you know, I just don't get the sense that Jason Tatum – really cares all that much about all this this stuff. I think he just wants to play ball. Mm. He's never like he never complains to me about anything. Mm -hmm. Like other people around him, you know, feed into this stuff and talk to him about it and make him aware. I, I just don't think Jason Tatum is, you know, going on, you know, looking at what other people are saying about this big thing between him and Steve Kerr. And Steve Kerr Listen, Steve Kerr doesn't give a shit either, to be honest. He doesn't care. I mean, he's been, he he cares way more about the election two days ago than he did about coming to Boston. And yeah, he had his little say last night about that, too. Yeah, I'm sure he did. I didn't see it, but I'm sure he well, did. It, 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 he had a little sarcasm. Uh, yeah. you, I'll just say, anybody wants to know, it's easy. Go Google it. You'll find them. Go YouTube yeah. them, whatever you want to do. You'll, you'll find it. And you you, know, you, I, I think Tatum, the good thing for Jason, now, I, I will say this. I saw he used his name in the third person last night post game. Um, yeah, I, I'm so not a fan of that. That no, that's no, the no, only I thing that I, I, I think I'm going to text him and be like, "Come on, man, <laughs> don't become Mike." I remember Michael Jordan. One of his retirement speeches might have been the first one. I think I counted how many times he used his name in the third person. It was like 50 times within one 10 minute <laughs> speech, and I'm just like, "Okay, you're the greatest ever. We get it." That doesn't mean you gotta say Michael, Michael, Michael. And uh I, I didn't I didn't watch the video. I just saw it in a quote where he said Jason. So I don't know how it came across, but yeah. Um, but yeah, like listen again, I, I I think this is overblown. I think people, you know, and again, sometimes too, you're trying to find things that can fuel you, right? And people are talking about, you know, you weren't the MVP last year, you weren't the best player in your team. Um, and you, you didn't play in the Olympics and, you know, sometimes you got to find those things. And, you know, I, I just thought again, in a week in which he was, uh, you know, basically cross-checked by, by Grant Williams and didn't really react huh. to that one. And then this with Steve Kerr, I thought, I thought Jason handled it pretty well. 
Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. They get over 10 million members and billions of dollars in award winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all, so you just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up 100 times your cash. Your game all season long on Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best way to get into the action in over 30 states, including California, Florida, Georgia, and Texas. Prize Picks is the only real money daily fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy so your lineups stay even if one of your players gets hurt or injured. If your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return, Prize Picks keeps your lineup live. Sign up today and give $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus because it's guaranteed. I think Steph Curry will get more than four three-pointers this week or Anthony Edwards more than 27 points. Cook up some hot takes with your friends and win real money this basketball season. Get your crew to run your game on price picks. Download the app today. Use code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Again, download the app today and use code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. And, you know, some of the prize picks you could be looking at, Luka Doncic for more than 31.5 points, Steph Curry for more than four three-pointers, Anthony Davis, more than 11 boards, the freak Giannis for more than 29.5 points. Again, download the app today. Use code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks. Run your game. Speaking of the Grant Williams thing, it it, it was inexplicable in his. I I I don't get it. I don't, I don't get what he was trying. Well, to I do. think he's just trying to keep his job. I, I do. I think he's just trying to stay in the league at this point and make sure he's good and play hard and oh, well, you know earn his teammates' hard. respect, which he didn't really have in Dallas. Can he get that in Charlotte? It was a dumb move. And again, like the the funny thing of that is, I remember you know they had their lockers next to each other for years and. Mm-hmm. That was back when Jason didn't really say two words and Grant wouldn't shut up in a good way. And I think Grant helped Jason Tatum get out of his shell and be more confident as a person. And and that's why I think, again, you look at how Tatum did not really react. I think he just choked it up to, ah, this is Grant being Grant. Like, I still love him. You know, he helped me in in, in my career and he's a good dude. He just never shuts up. Yeah. Now, um, moving on a little bit, one uh, guy that continues to, open our eyes a little bit is Nemus Quaita. Yes. Uh, he had another decent game last night. Yep. He, 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 he does good big man stuff. I call it useful. I, I call it useful bigs, you know, stuff. Yeah. He doesn't useful big stuff. He plays big. Uh, he, he's a finisher. He's an alley-oop target. He said, Oh, there's a great photo uh, in, in the Boston globe today of the block. He made the hand is absolutely cupping the ball, the perfect, textbook dream yeah. block of a poor guy you know yeah. and of course thing is about it that kept the ball in play it wasn't one of those showboat blocks knocking into the third row or fifth row or the 20th row and then they come back and they score anyway you know no it was he he's he, he's useful now yeah. the there's a casual there's a, a a casualty in this uh new rotation if you will tillman now yeah, he's tillman, not playing tillman got dnp yeah and just when we thought we're starting to like him, you know, that he contributes at both ends. So I don't know if they do. Once again, it, it, it speaks to my point about how many good, useful NBA players they do have. Uh, okay. Well, Kate is different, right? Kate is energy, toughness, athleticism, shot block, yeah. run the court, finish, rebound. Like that's all he is. Now, I will say this when you have your other four guys around him, Nemus Kate is fine. Yeah. But when you don't have Jalen Brown, it's a lot harder oh, yeah. for the guy who can't really score. Now, with regard to this minutes, uh, this extraordinary minutes of uh, that uh, Steve Kerr is distributing, it brought something to mind that I was, uh, lived through. In 1970-71, the Detroit Pistons, coached by Butch von Bredikoff, he basically announced he was going to go to platoon okay. in, in, in a very serious way. Really? And, and I, I was dying to look, and I looked it up. Yeah. See if I was, you know, misremembering having a senior moment, or, you know, or whatever it help. And yeah. no, no, it was it was even more amazing than I remembered. But the one thing I here's why it 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 got my interest back in for some reason. Did, have you ever heard of a chap named Otto Moore? Yeah, I heard the name. I heard the name. Otto Moore was a six eleven journeyman center of the yeah. of the, that of the time. Okay, and he happened to be this the center 
and when they had a draft pick named Bob Lanier. Yep. Bob Lanier's a rookie. And uh this and by the way, the the uh, first pick in the draft in 1970. Yeah. Rudy Tomjano was second, you know, okay. Yep. And so on we go. And Maravich was third, Cowens was fourth, and Sam Lacey was fifth. Well, anyway, wow. that's that that's another story. But okay. Butch shared the minutes. That team had 10 guys who for the season averaged 21 or more minutes a game. Wow. Wow. And and, and an 11th to average 18. And the 11th was none other than the great Terry Driscoll, pride of Boston College. Yeah. Well. But Dave Bing was the leader with 37. Uh, Jimmy Walker, that was a hell of a backcourt, by the way, at 35. Terry Dissinger, 29. Bill Hewitt, pride of. Cambridge Ridge in Latin Ooh. and U.S. of Southern California. Bill Hewitt, 28. Lanier, 25. Howard Comives, 25. Moore, 24. So basically, it's, they, they were 24 points, but they split the, the job for, for the season. Okay. Erwin Muller, who was a, 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 a not thuggy, but a brutish kind of guy, 6'8 from out of U.S. San Francisco. Steve Mix, before he uh, became 76 or 24, a guy named Bob Quick out of Xavier, who's 21, and Driscoll, 18. 11 guys on that team have played 18 or more minutes a game. That's crazy. How'd they do? They were 45 and 37. Okay, not bad. Yeah, not bad. But That's probably what Golden State will be, if they're lucky. <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. So there's your little historical blessing of the day, as the 70-71 Pistons – but the thing I love is the idea that Moore and Hall of Famer to be Bob Lanier literally split that job that year, which was, and he should, it shouldn't have happened. Lanier deserved to play more. But I think I'm convinced that Butch was wedded to his mad scientist uh, idea of, of the <laughs> platooning, you know? So, hey, you know who's already missing a game? Anthony Davis. Oh, oh yeah. Of course. Well, hey, turn the hourglass over. Oh, oh, thank you for reminding me. Four guys on that Pistons team played all 82 games. Wow. This is the NBA. All right, so never- so that, that's what I'm getting at here. AD's already hurt a little bit, and we know he's going to miss games. LeBron has said he wants to play 82 games this year at 40 years old. Bob, is is this a stupid idea or not? You know, maybe if you – in some of those games, you play 20 minutes instead of – or 15 minutes instead of, you know – But back-to-backs? You like him playing back to back? No, I mean no. It, 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 I never, you know. I'm. I guess I have to go along with the program here. You know. I mean, I'm no, still you don't. You don't have to go along with it. I'm you still old it. school. I'm still old school. But right. um, but think about it. the four guys there played 82 games and Walker. Are any of them 40 that. years old, Bob? <laughs> no. And Walker <laughs> played 79 games. Okay? No, no, none of them were named LeBron either. None of them no. were 40 years old. No, right, no. But none of them were. Hey, this dude is different. We know that. We've known that for a long time. There's going to be nobody like LeBron James ever again, okay? But but I think J.J. Redick and LeBron need to have a talk here and understand that I, I know you got to – obviously, you want to get to the playoffs, all that. But if LeBron James, you get to the playoffs and he's worn down by then, yeah. no, what yeah. good is it? What good no. is it? No, no, I, I, I agree. But once again, with AD, it's it's such a – and and oh by the way, uh, we hadn't mentioned that uh, you know the losses also missed a game. He did play last night, put up good numbers. Zion, yeah. And yeah. now he's got what's he got a thigh. He's got his that it's body. Something. Just, that body just yes. doesn't want to play basketball. Yeah, yeah. He, he wants to the UFC or something. I mean, no. it doesn't want. Well, he wouldn't. He wouldn't last there long. He wouldn't last or, long. We know that. Or, or uh, you know, rush the passer. You know, but but not play basketball. And he's no, so good. So. Yeah, he he is talented. It's just, you know, again, these guys, and that's, again, what we've talked about. I worry about it a little bit from the other end with, you know, seen it, and we've seen it with guys like Porzingis, like Kevin Durant, the body build of Chet Holmgren and Victor Wembanyama. Is it going to hold up? Or, no. or Now, Victor supposedly, again, has this routine, takes care of his body, this, that, and the other, like very few do, especially at his age. But – that body build, Chet Holmgren, I know, you know, it wasn't, it was fr- fluky, but he missed his whole rookie season. Um, you know, you, you just wonder whether these guys that are big, strong, thick, and that's why what LeBron's done 
is remarkable. Well, if remarkable. you check the history, when he when he came along, I I, I did a pretty good study, I think, of, of thinking about historical precedents and that and that body type just historically doesn't last. It, right. it just doesn't. And and uh, you know, Lonnie Shelton. Yeah. I don't know if you, Lonnie Shelton was a good basketball player, but but yeah. he was he had an abbreviated career. Very yeah. if anybody had a body very similar to the bond to uh, Zion Williamson, it probably was Lonnie Shelton. Yeah. And uh, uh, Oliver Davis. I mean Oliver, Oliver Miller. Excuse me, Oliver Miller, yeah. who, who was a he was a six nine. Actually, he was a finesse player. Really funny yes. with that body, but a good touch and all that. But uh, but but Lonnie Shelton didn't have the career he should have had, and and and. I mean, I, I, you know, you you want the guy to play. You want to see this guy. You want him out there. You want him in to enjoy his life and do what he loves. But he's good. He's very good at this thing of basketball when he can stay on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> he's very it's good kinda, at it. it. It's again, you'd love to see him play seventy-five games and oh. see not only what he's capable of doing, but what his team's capable of doing. It is the most wonderful time of the year. Yes, the NBA season, folks. It is the best. I, the, the, look, the NFL is great. I understand. But if you're looking into star power, celebrity, entertainment, it's the NBA. There's no doubt about it. And, and my Celtics, I'm looking for them to defend. We need, we need a new dynasty in the NBA. We need one. Okay? And I think this Celtic group can do it. I know the Celtic group can do it. And you know who else, from what I understand, is a Celtic fan? It's Hugh Jackman. Yes. Wolverine himself... The greatest showman, Hugh Jackman, is a big Celtic fan. And if you're like us and you want to check out the Celtics or maybe any other team that happens to be coming to town to try to knock off the kings of the NBA, the Celtics, make sure you go to Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Now, Game Time, and you can get your Celtics tickets there. It's really easy to do. Uh, Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier because Game Time Picks filters out the fluff, right? To show you incredible deals and great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Like when I go to my game time app, it says Celtics game right there. Boom, pops up. How much the price is. I'm ready to go. It's as simple as that. They have super deals. They're as good as it gets. Check it out on the game time app. And and again, I, I, I can't emphasize how easy it is. Even for an idiot like me, you download the app. It's got a G on it for game time. Mm-hmm. You just click it on. You can designate where you want to go, what you want to do. You can, you know, favorite your games and your cities and so forth. And it pops up on the screen. You click it on, and there you go. And you're off and running. It's as simple as that. They also have curated deals that make it easy to find best, best prices and great seats. They have the super deal. And I love this part. You you know the view of your seats before you buy them. You, got, you know what you're getting. And it has the lowest price guarantee. Event cancellation protection, job loss protection, and so much more. So, game time picks. Curation makes it easier to save more on concerts, comedy, theater, sports. Oh, speaking of concerts, uh, Coldplay coming to Gillette Stadium in July of 2025. Tickets are already up on game time. Not bad either. Not bad at all. Um, and the Jingle Ball Kiss, uh, the Kiss, you know, the I Heart, I Heart Jingle Ball at the Garden. You can get tickets on that, too. And they always have big stars around Christmas time. So all in pricing, toggling. They call it toggling. Uh, It shows you everything up front. No surprise fees to check out. And I mentioned the sea views. Great panorama views. So you know you're buying. Game time ticket coverage. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time picks. Download the Game Time app, create an account. Use code CLNS for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code CLNS for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. Now, there's a guy I'd like to bring up that yeah. uh, it, it's interesting what he's doing at the moment and and how his career has evolved. Okay. And, and I don't know what your thoughts on him, but this is flying blind. It's great. I want to hear your thoughts. I'll just play word association or, 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 or image association or anything you want. Dennis Schroeder, what comes to mind for you with Dennis Schroeder? A lightning rod, you know, a guy that a lot of people, he's been in a lot of different teams because I think. Um, I mean, just that seven, easy. that's all. Yeah, he's not that easy to, <laughs> to get along with or, or, or play with. So he, he's b- bounced around quite a bit. How many teams? 
seven, one of them twice. Yeah, I mean that's a lot. The Lakers of teams in a in a fairly what was he drafted ten he years started, ago? About I, I I have it. I got it right here. Uh, his rookie year was 2013 14. Okay. So about 10, and, 11 years. Uh, he's going OKC, Lakers, Celtics, Rockets, Lakers, Raptors, Nets. Now, here's why I bring it up. He's having a hell of a start. Hawks. 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 Of course. Of course. Hawks first. Then yeah. OKC. Yeah. yeah. The Hawks drafted him. Yeah. Uh, for people who don't know, he is German. He is yeah. African. He is German, African German. I mean, what can I say? He's uh, obviously, and uh, he's a very much a German. I mean, and and uh, it's all history. He was not developed here in the United States. He's one of those guys. He was developed completely in Europe. Did not play college ball in the United States. Yep. And uh, and he, by the way, has a a world championship ring. If they have a ring, I don't know what you get to win the world. But Germany won last year, you know. And he was the point guard. Yep. Well, I'm bringing this up because I'm reading the New York papers, and they are fawning over him. And, and okay, and, here, here's okay. what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. You can fawn over him all you want. There's such a thing as a leading scorer on every crappy team. Um, I know the Nets are four and four right now, but they're going to be a crappy team. We know that they're crappy, and he's not leading them. But Cam Thomas is. Cam Thomas is another guy that's best served coming off the bench for a good team. Uh, that's what I think Schroeder is. That, that's the problem. You have this this Brooklyn Nets team that I don't know if they're tanking. I mean, certainly looks at it by the look of their roster. I mean, it, it stinks. <laughs> But the point, what I'm going to, they're actually playing better than people thought. So, yeah, oh yeah, no and question. Got a co- you know, the coach. Did you know how much? I didn't know the, anything about Fernandez, the new coach. I, I, no, I, nothing, zero. All right, but the, apparently, the, the initial Dixville notch returns on him are pretty good. You know, in terms of what he's yeah. doing. And why I'm bringing up Schroeder ultimately, Jeff, is they're touting him as a leader. He is. Wow. He is he's assumed control of that team, and he is outspoken and he's leading. And he's and he's he's, uh, he's sounding like a statesman. I'm telling you. And maybe it's like Rondo. It's not, maybe it's like Rondo and and how he matured later on in his career. Maybe it's similar. Yeah. Well, maybe it is. So at th- he's 31. So time, you know, got yeah. Hey, you know that. So interesting that uh, I'm just throwing him out there. He's because always been fast. Oh, remember he was so noticeable because because when he came up came to us, he had that streak in his hair. He's finally oh, got, yeah, yeah, that's you, right. you couldn't miss him. We had that orange streak in his hair. You, know, you got rid of that. But it's an interesting career. You know, I mean, and there's how many yeah, hundreds of play, guys in the NBA? And and it's like they said in New York, 8 million stories, right? They all have a story. And his story, you know, quite frankly, is unique as a, as a, as a, a dark skinned African a German, for, you know, he's a phenomenon. And you're right. He, I, I was thinking about analogies. Was he, I don't know. Patrick Beverly with a jump shot, <laughs> or yeah, his jump shot got better. But yeah, I mean, he's he's super fast. I mean, again, he can make people better when he wants to. Um, I remember, you know, a couple of good games. Like I remember being present one night when he had the good Celtics got twenty twenty five. He, you know, but he, but obviously he gets passed around. When a guy gets passed around that way, it means two yeah. things: there's something available there that people want, but then they don't. But it's not enough that you you, you cry about losing them. <laughs> but he's, you know, he's going to have a career. He's going to make a lot of money, and and I'm just throwing it out there. He's a, he's a, to me an interesting story right now. That's Rob, uh, Bob's random random uh, fact of the day, <laughs> random guy of the day. We we can't close Bob without talking about the uh, the lone undefeated team in the NBA right now, the oh, Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm on, on the bandwagon. I'm on. Oh, it. oh here we go. I'm on. I'm, no, I, I'm 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 on the bandwagon with them. Why? Uh, I just think they got some good. I just think got some good player and Kenny Atkinson. Yeah, uh, they got a coach that that is well respected in that league. Yes, as yeah. far as I can tell. Yep. And they've got right now who's had a better backcourt start than than Garland and Mitchell. Nobody. And remember, Nobody remember backcourt. a year ago, not even there was some speculation. I think it might have been the agent, even somebody saying that Darius Garland wanted out if Donovan Mitchell was coming back. <laughs> Darius Garland wanted out of Cleveland. And I'm thinking to myself, why? They're very different. Darius Garland is a point guard. They can share this spotlight here. Obviously, yeah. Donovan Mitchell is the guy that everybody talks about. But to me, the most underrated guy on that team is Evan Mobley. And well, and I was just going to say, Alan. So there we go. <laughs> yep. The two of them. That's a, that's a, they fill it in my category, useful bigs. They got two useful bigs there. 
Yep. And and I think their heads appear to be in the right place. And and uh, I think they love their positioning, knowing that the the Knicks were getting all this offseason play, you know, and 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 we'd still have the Sixers and the people were speculating how they were going to turn out. That's another story. We, we don't know. How, you know, we have no idea how that's going to turn out, you know, right. and and the Bucks, you know, because of the but they were laying in the weeds a little bit and, and, uh, and they gave the Celtics trouble and they lost Mitchell last year. And I think they're in a position where they're in a, we're going to show you mode. You know what I mean? We're going to show you. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, I think Cleveland, I think Cleveland is uh, definitely going to have a good year. They just have a lot of good players and then their bench, you know, they got a lot of high character, Ty Jerome, George Niang, Sam Merrill, Karis Levert, like the, the job that Kobe Altman and, and Mike Yancey have done to build this team when we thought they were dead when LeBron left years ago again. Yep. Yep. I mean, we thought there was no way they were going to bounce back from that. The job those two have done, I, I would say this too, Mike Yancey should get a job running his own uh, franchise. He's been that good. The former uh, Bonnie. Uh, I, um, I well remember him. Yep, and I know you do. I know you he do. Was he was my guy. I, I said – Yep. He was the first guy when I started a run of guys who I'd go to the NCAA tournament and say, every year is going to be a guy I want to adopt. Yep. And he's the first one. That, yeah, yeah, and when if, was, you, was, if you be, if you were around him, you'd really want to adopt him because as good as he was on the court and as much as you liked him, he's that much better uh, off the court. Really, really intelligent, um, handles himself the right way. So they put together a team here that, yeah, I mean, they, they just have a lot. I don't know if Donovan Mitchell's good enough as a number one guy to lead a team to the NBA finals. But I will say this, like Jimmy Butler did it a few years ago, like, and, and Donovan Mitchell is a, is a more, like he's a more well-rounded maybe overall player than, than Jimmy Butler. And they've got a great supporting cast. I mean, they really like, that's the one thing. There's not much drop off. The team fits together very well. One more thing we have to, uh, we should address. I uh, that are we waiting? I'm waiting for Joe Missoula to walk back the, the advocation, you know, fighting, fighting, yeah, endorsing fighting in the NBA. Foolish. I mean, nobody's pushed back that much. I mean, they pushed really? back. Foolish. He should have been called into the principal's office. Uh, it was a the, weird comment. It was a weird. Yeah, we we, we got to we still got to get Brad Stevens on here at some point. Yeah. Again, I know we talked about that. I'll I'll, I'll see. I I actually uh, texted him the other day because I was watching. We did an event out in Sioux Falls and I was watching Southern Illinois play. And the last time I had seen the Salukis play in person was Brad Stevens's rookie year as a head coach at Butler. Okay. They went to Carbondale. It was his 11th game, I believe as a, as a head coach went to Carbondale, won the game on a 40 footer from AJ Graves at the buzzer. They oh. win for again, 11th game of Brad Stevens's coaching mm. career. And how does Brad Stevens react? No reaction. Zero reaction. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. <laughs> Not surprising now. It was no, then. No, no. Well, yeah, you didn't, we didn't know anything about him. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Very good. All right. All right. Well, there you have it. Uh, Ryan and Goodman podcast. Um, breaking it all down. Celtics. Uh, we got a little bit of Cavs. We got a little bit of Dennis Schroeder. Don't forget those 70, 71 Pistons. The 71 <laughs> Pistons. I mean, when, when you come here, you never know what you're going to get. So uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we are presented as always by Prize Picks, and we'll see you uh, next time. <laughs> <laughs>